let me let me pull it. Here's a, an example of a Masonic apron. Okay, let's take a look at this. We'll zoom in here. And what do you see right at the very center of this symbol, symbolical array? What do you? Th what is that? I think it's a barn. It's not a barn. Is that the ark? It's the ark. It's you know it's probably that's from the Noah's ark. It's Noah's ark. So that's the so that's supposed to be the ocean around it. And that that's thing. The, it's floating in the waters of the great flood. Oh. And and if you look closely, I know it's hard to tell, but growing out of here, it's a chicken. <laughs> it's an acacia. The acacia oh, is the a acacia bush. It's a Masonic symbol for rebirth, regeneration, rejuvenation. So the idea here is that in that ark is preserved all of the seeds, the biological diversity of the world that is now being erased from the planet by the waters of the flood. The acacia, is it related to the acacia tree or the acacia bush? Is it yeah. the same sort of thing? Yeah. That, yeah. You know, that's the same bush that they believe is responsible mm. for Moses having the visions of God. So you what know, are the giving him the Ten Commandments because the acacia bush is rich in dimethyltryptamine. Ah, the flaming bush being symbolic of somehow or another extracting the DMT from that, smoking it or lighting it on fire, um, and that being the transmission method for the dimethyltryptamine, which of course is one of the most profound psychedelic experiences and gives people this feeling of being in contact with the divine. Now, do you think it's any coincidence that the Freemasons have venerated the acacia for hundreds of years? Well, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's modern-day scholars who are looking at the, st the story of Moses and connecting it to some sort of a psychedelic trip. Yeah. Here is... What's Which called? is another thing that's sto is slowly being exonerated today. Those yeah. ideas are being vindicated today yes. in a way that before, you know, you would say just a few decades ago that somehow or another Moses was on drugs. You're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And people would just, and, and any real legitimate sort of uh, stories being connected to psychedelic drugs, people would think of as being preposterous. And now, and now it's more and more accepted uh, every day. Right. Oh, simply because the evidence is accumulated. It's overwhelming. The Ellison, there's no question <clears throat> that in the Ellisonian mysteries, they were imbibing some type of a consciousness altering substance. I think that there's no question during the Mithraic mysteries also they were. Um, they don't know what that was, though, right? Not exactly, unless you, you know, I think, um, who was it? Maybe Albert Hoffman and a couple others. They, they, they wrote a book in the 70s on the Ellicinian Mysteries where they were talking about that. And I read it so long ago, I've kind of forgotten what their, what their final conclusion was. But it was definitely that they were doing some type of a psychedelic potion. Well, even Soma, when you go back yeah. to yeah. the ancient Hindus, the Soma being some sort of a mystery concoction they don't know what it was but right. it most likely had some sort of psychedelic properties to it exactly. they just don't know what it was they don't know exactly what it was which but is yeah. amazing when you consider the fact that this stuff was so profound and so important to them and now we don't even know what was in it most right. likely some concoction with probably included psychedelic mushrooms yeah well i'm convinced that you know one of the <clears throat> that one of the great boons to humankind is psychedelics and it was a profound mistake to criminalize it when we should have venerated it as ancient cultures did and provided a context in which people could do it with wisdom, you know, and propriety rather than driving it underground, you know, and turning it into a criminal enterprise. That has been, I think, enormously, had enormous destructive consequences for our society by, by criminalizing this for the last half century. Yeah, well, most certainly. And you can see the difference in the art of the 1960s, especially when it comes to music, the difference between the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. the shallow nature of a lot of the music that came out of the 70s right. and the disco and all that stuff. And then yeah. look at what was going on in the 60s with Hendrix and yeah. Jim Morrison, most likely psychedelic related. Oh, of course it was. Yeah. Yeah, of course it the, was. Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, yeah. the profound change in the music of the Beatles once they discovered the yeah. LSD. Oh, yeah. it, it inspired an enormous burst of creativity. You know? What's really interesting that what we're seeing now is huge benefits in psychedelic therapy for people with post-traumatic stress disorders. Right. And it's out of war that we're finding these therapies for yeah. people that went to war and these therapies, the best ones are psychedelics. Yeah. Which is really amazing. Well, you know, in my own case, you know, I basically went from essentially being a juvenile delinquent to the quest for God in one weekend after my first, <laughs> basically. So, wow. 
<laughs> it was that that quick. A lot of people have had the same story. I mean, Terrence McKenna spoke of his uh, one of his trips to the jungle being that he was this sort of ne'er-do-well, just couldn't get it together, and then he came out of it, this psychedelic shaman who uh -huh. had this intense desire to spread the word. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, and I think it's, we're definitely moving in the right direction. I just, it's, of course, you know, for me, I'm impatient. I want to see mm -hmm. it move a lot faster. I want to see us just end this ridiculous drug war, Yeah. you know, and, and yeah, of course, there's going to be a downside to it. There's a downside to everything, you know, and, and but the, the upside is so substantial. The upside though. is so substantial, and the downside of it is minuscule compared to the downside of the drug war itself. Not only that, how about the drugs that we already have that are legal? The, the drugs that are sanctioned are the worst ones. The worst ones, yeah. 